All right, let's talk about finding the volume of a rectangular pyramid. So we're first going to start with a rectangular prism, and you can kind of sketch this along with me, um, and then we'll talk about how that relates to a rectangular pyramid. So I'm going to sketch my prism here, rectangular prism, and this is usually um, kind of the foundation for volume. We start with a rectangular prism. Um, I'm sketching mine here, I'm trying to make it as straight and three-dimensional as I can. Um, and we're going to talk about when you find the volume to this, the typical formula, not the typical, but the formula for solving for the volume of a rectangular prism. So I think I can straighten that out a little bit more. There we go. Is we do length times the width and then times the height. So uh, volume on this side can equal length times width times height, and that gets us the full volume to the inside of this. If we fill this all the way up to the top, we get the full volume of this rectangular prism. Well, another way you'll see that formula written sometimes is that the volume equals, so if I put volume equals, sorry, switching to blue here, the length times the width, so you'll see that I'm kind of, Cover, uh, coloring in the, the area of the base right here, which is the length times the width. So you'll see a big B for base because you get the base area measurement by multiplying the length right here times the width. And then you just multiply that times, finally, the height. So another way to see that formula is just a capital BH because the capital B means you got the base area. And then after you got the base area, you just multiplied it by the height right there. So when we talk about finding the area then for a rectangular prism, um, there's a connection here. And we're going to make a couple more sketches here. I can, um, again, draw my, I'm going to write, do uh, two rectangles here. We're going to make a rectangular prism, and we'll draw an upside-down rectangular pyramid and talk about the relationship. So my rectangular prism, I um, guess I'll come out here. Come out there. You can kind of sketch that in. Um, and we'll keep it basically. We'll just come back and kind of leave it like that. Um, I've got my rectangular prism there. And then we come in and draw the pyramid. Kind of come to a point. One thing that was found about a rectangular pyramid, if I turn that upside down, is if you were to fill this pyramid up, let's say you filled this thing up with sand and the top was open and you filled in all the way to the tip of the bottom, you filled this all the way with sand. And you did the same thing to the rectangular prism. The rectangular prism is only going to fill up if you took this sand that filled up the rectangular pyramid and poured it into the prism. It's only going to fill up about one third, about right there about one-third of that prism. It's not going to fill up the whole thing. So when we um, talk about that, the formula for finding the area to a rectangular pyramid is going to be, or the volume, I said area, but volume, is one-third the base. We talked about that capital B on this pack page here. The base means the kind of the area of the base times the height. So this is the formula that we're going to use, and that's why they use it. You fill up a, a rectangular pyramid upside down, you pour it into the prism, you're only going to get about one-third. So we can use that to solve. And you don't need to really remember it, but understanding the formula, I think, is important when we solve. So we've got this word problem, a glass paperweight in the shape of a rectangular pyramid has a base that is four inches by three inches. I'll go ahead and write those in. You should have this here, a base four inches by three inches right there, and the height of five inches. So going all the way up to the top here, I'm talking about a height of five inches. Find the volume of the paperweight. First thing we want to find is we know from our previous thing is the volume equals one-third the base times the height. Well, the base is this section in here, the kind of the the area, the floor of this pyramid. So that's going to be 3 times 4. 
And so 3 times 4 is 12, so I have volume equals 1 third 12 times the height, which is going to be 5 right there. So in solving, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'll go ahead and multiply right here and right here. So volume should equal 1 third. 12 times 5 is 60. And then I'm going to multiply that times 1 third, or think of what 1 third of 60 is. And um, what goes into 63 times is 20 in one of them, so um, one of them would be 20. So the volume of this rectangular prism should be 20, and it was inches cubed when we write this, because that's how we're going to write volume. So all I did, much like I'd solve a rectangular prism, length times width times height, same basic idea, we do a base times height, but we just need one third of that measurement in order to solve. Try this one, one more example here. This one I just have measurement. And here's another way you can do this. Right there, I multiplied um, first right here, and then I applied the fraction part second. You don't have to, you could do this way. So remember our formula is that the volume equals one third base times the height. Um, and so when we do that, let's first figure out the base part of this. Well, the base part looks like I have 6 times 6 right here. So when I rewrite this, it's volume equals 1 third. 6 times 6 is 36. And then I'm just going to multiply that times the height. It looks like the height they're giving me right here is 6. So let me write this a little bit cleaner right here. Volume equals 1 third. 36 times 6 right here. And um, one thing we could do when you have this is you can also, I couldn't multiply right here if I want, and then at the end I can apply the fraction. But another way, sometimes a faster way of doing this, is, is looking at your two values. I have 36 and I have 6. Does this 1 third, are any of these divisible by 3? Can I get 1 third of any of these numbers in an even way? I can. 6 right here. Um, 1 third of 6 is 2. 2 goes into 6 3 times. So I can say volume equals now 36 times 2 because I applied that 1 third times 6 and 36 times 2 is going to get me 72. So or 72 if this is yards cube, make sure you got your units in there. But what I did there is just applied this fraction first to something that was convenient or really easy, uh, not easy, but pretty straightforward in applying the fraction to, and then multiplied it by 36. I could have said what's 36 times 6 over here. I would have gotten 36. I would have got 18, 19, 20, 21, 216, and then divided that by 3. If I do 216 divided by 3, I'm going to end up getting 72, and it's the same answer, but depending on how you want to do your math, it could be a little faster to do it this way over here. So just remembering that the volume, one-third base times the height, and remember that the base is talking about this inside part right there.